Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. I'm really excited about today's guest, Robert Brill. He's a CEO of Brill Media. It's a media buying agency. He comes from Los Angeles, and I'm really excited about this show. Um, we're going to talk about business, advertising, marketing, and he comes from the city that does it all. So, Robert, welcome. Thanks, Christopher. Uh, honor to be here. Yeah. Tell people your story and how you got started, and we'll, we'll dive into it. Absolutely. So, um, I've worked in advertising for 20 years, and uh, I started in 2003 when uh, we were doing it was guerrilla marketing. It was not called social media marketing. Um, fast forward to 2013, I started uh, my agency, Brill Media. And uh, fast forward to 2023, we're uh, one of the fastest growing private companies in America on the Inc. 5000, Financial Times 500. And what we do is we have the knowledge and expertise to help businesses grow, whether they have thousand dollars a month in advertising or a million dollars a month in advertising we know the methods and practices to generate sales and leads for our clients yeah yeah i love that and like i said um like uh, i'm a marketer at heart i love marketing and um i think marketing is just you know your ability to get your brand out there so kind of talk about you know we talk about um you know tips for growing businesses large and small yeah, so um, there there are a few things in place, and they're they're not they're not sexy. They're actually very foundational, boring things. The first is have a strategy. The strategy is a navigation plan. I think too many small businesses um, just do. Um, according to Facebook, there are ten million businesses on Facebook advertising, and according to Neil Patel, about sixty two percent of those advertising campaigns fail. And they failed because they don't have a strategy. They don't have product market fit. And the first thing you need to do as anyone with a business trying to grow a business with advertising or, or general marketing is really have a plan of action. What do you want to accomplish? Who are your customers? Why do they want to buy from you? What is your transformative value? And that strategy, what it helps you do, it protects you from making bad investment decisions. And the example I give is like, you know, everyone, if whether you have $2,000 a month or $1,000 a month to spend in advertising or a, a million, you are going to have sellers coming at you saying, hey, you should buy our ads from Spectrum Reach, or you should buy advertising on the bus bench. Or you should buy, you know, the local rep for Meta coming coming at you. What they're trying to do is sell you so that they can make a commission. What you think is that they have your best intentions in mind, and you don't have the wherewithal to understand what's right and what's wrong. And your your protection against making bad decisions on your advertising and marketing campaigns is your strategy. If it's part of your strategy, do it. If it's not part of your strategy, don't do it. And then don't get distracted by any any new shiny toys that come along the way. Yeah. I love that. Just, you know, stick to your, you know, focus, relentless focus. Um, then the other question is um, how to run advertising like a pro. Yeah. So the best thing you can do, no matter what type of business you have, unless you have an advertising business, there's a decent chance that you're not an expert in advertising. You put a car in front of me and tell me to change the radiator, um, I'll probably break it. <laughs> um, if you have a, a any physical ailment beyond a, a paper cut that requires a Band-Aid, I'll probably mess it up. You don't want me going anywhere near anything that isn't advertising. Picking up a hammer and, and fixing things, that's just not my deal. My wife does all that. Take it, take, you know, that's just who I am. But what I'm really good at is understanding the methods and practices that grow businesses in 2023. And so is our team. We have a team of um, 25 people. And the goal here is really have an awareness of what you're good at and what you're not good at. And think about your highest value work. The thing mm -hmm. that is going to get you the most money back, the thing that is best for society that you can do. If it's not advertising, you should outsource your advertising. So that's number one. The, it's likely that you should outsource your advertising. And by the way, if you find a really good agency like ours, sorry to to be to be like that, but it's like we're we're really good at what we do. 
you know, our fees start at $500 a month. So if you have a thousand in advertising and you're willing to pay us $500 for $1,500 a month, you can get good advertising. If you still decide you want to do it on your own, there's a few things. Think about who your customers are and what do they want from you and whether or not your, your product or service is communicated best with visuals or best with text. If your business is good at being communicated with visuals, look at Meta, Instagram, Facebook. That's number one. If you have a product or service that people want immediately, like there's maybe some level of time sensitivity, like I need flowers for, you know, Mother's Day and Mother's Day is in a day and a half, like that's Google search. Okay. If if people can take advantage of your product and service immediately or they can search for something that has an immediate like payoff and you can be there with that payoff, you should be doing Google search. The other thing is look at advertising on Facebook and Instagram as a single source of advertising inventory. It doesn't matter to me whether people buy your product off of Instagram or buy your product off of Facebook. What matters is that they are buying your product. So one of the very important things for us that we do for our clients is we train Meta's machine learning algorithm to find your best customers. And the goal with that is keyword targeting on Meta is old technology. It's not the best way that Meta wants you to use their advertising platform. What they want you to do is broad targeting, age, gender, and location. You pair it up with a creative testing framework. And what you're able to do is tell give Meta the visual assets, the, the ads, the, the really cool messages that you have. You're able to give Meta enough of those such that they can get your ads in front of the right people. And I'll give you a really fundamental example of that. Our agency, Brill Media, a lot of our business comes as a white label media buying firm. And what that means is other agencies who do creative work, they do marketing, they do email, they do websites, they do all these different types of work. They trust us to do their advertising, their media buying. There's maybe five or 10,000 people in the whole United States that can possibly work with us as a white label partner, but many more businesses that can work with us outside of that. So we have messages that target 140 million people, which is nuts, but they're getting to the small fraction of individuals who have the ability to work with us. Why? Because Meta has the most powerful algorithm in the marketplace and we are training it to find our best customers. And every business, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a mechanic, a plumber, uh, you're selling products or services, you're a restaurant, you're a juice bar, whatever the case is, you can use Meta in that exact same way. But the thing is, you need experts who are dedicated to advertising to be able to invest your money appropriately to deliver that strong outcome for you. Mm. Yeah, very powerful, especially Meta and Google. Um, we talk about, uh, well, you're bullish on TikTok for marketing and advertising. Yeah. So think of TikTok as primetime programming customized just for you. So in the past, when there was no internet uh, and, and the way you got your entertainment, one of the ways was you watched you know, television, you watched ABC or NBC or even cable television. And every week at a certain time, your favorite show would come on. Now, fast forward to 2023, going into 2024, you have that exact framework, but it's customized for you. And by the way, you can watch your favorite programming anytime you want. You log on to TikTok, you scroll, and what ends up happening is the algorithm knows you so well that it gives you the programming that you're interested in. The value of TikTok, both as creating organic content, like posting videos to TikTok, or running ads for TikTok with, with inside TikTok, is that you are your business gets to be part of that program. We run we create content for TikTok and we run ads for on TikTok. And what I've noticed for our business is that when you run ads, when you run content on TikTok, it reminds people who maybe you haven't spoken to in 5, 10, 15 years that you exist, which is great for my business because we're in a relationship business. It reminds people um, to come and reach out to me. And of all the sea of 
possible advertising experts that live in that, that exist in the marketplace, they are reminded to come to us because we're right in front of them because the algorithm knows which people are going to be relevant for our content. So for, and again, this is valuable for every business, small business, medium or large. TikTok is the town square, but the town square is customized for you. Everything you want is one swipe up away for you. So as a business, you want to be part of that conversation. You want to be part of that town square. You want to be part of that video content that your customers will love. Mm. Yeah, interesting. I love that analogy of time your uh, town square because Twitter is kind of the town square for you know tweets and just kind of short form and looks like TikTok is more for videos. Um, also, what I recently talked with another guest, they were saying that TikTok is really great if you're if you're selling products. It's really it's really great. But if, but what about, how about if you're selling like services and um, uh, other things non product related? Um, Go ahead. Absolutely. I mean, look, there are lawyers on TikTok. We're on TikTok. There are other <laughs> marketing firms on TikTok. Um, there are PR firms. There is a company that does like imaging, like get x-rays and stuff like that. You know, like when you need to go to the doctor, um, an imaging company. And the core idea is you're building top of mind awareness so that when people need the thing that, that you offer, you are top of mind you are a re, you are there with a reminder that hey we provide this service and you're relying on the algorithm to get your message to the person who's interested in what you have it's sort of like a combination of the visual components of meta and the sort of immediate intent version or component of google right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the the challenge or the the opportunity with tiktok is create great content and there are people who will train you on how to create great content. You create that content and you're trusting the algorithm to get in front of the right people and it turns into business. Yeah. The other, uh, so I'm always on, uh, on, uh, the, the marketplace for trends and cutting edge ideas, you know, and we'll talk about, um, so the one thing that, uh, was recently interesting is, um, what are your thoughts on using viral, short form videos on Twitter and what, how about, um, using viral short form, uh, video on LinkedIn? I'm just curious where you're. Yeah. Thinking. I mean, let's take Let's take a step back. The underlying foundation, what is viral? There's kind of like, there's kind of like two things that are viral. There's usually lightning in the bottle. That thing that just happens to capture mass attention at a given moment because it's unique and interesting. That type of viral is hard, usually hard to replicate. So for example, Remember the woman on the airplane? I think her last name is Gomez. She that person is not real. <laughs> not real. That woman, yeah. that's not a business strategy. That's a moment in time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's unfortunate for her. But what what the reason I bring her up is because she's actually leveraging that by promoting her own personal brand in a very positive way. But yeah. that type of virality, just that video, that's yeah. not a business strategy. So the first thing is, like, rule that out. Like, you you might catch lightning in a bottle, but you really can't <laughs> guarantee that unless you pay lots of money to lots of people. But here's the thing. A lot of what's viral, mm. it's not viral. It's marketing. Mm -hmm, viral, mm -hmm. the, the viral video in that equation is actually something that's been pushed I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spend my time and money pushing a brand or a service. I'm gonna make this one piece of content big yeah. as part of my marketing strategy, and that is controllable. Mm -hmm. So every business has something that's some level of virality. Like I'm not talking about national vir virality. I'm talking about local virality because let's be honest, most businesses, unless you're Hershey's or you know some of these bigger brands, you don't need millions of eyeballs and millions of customers you need hundreds or thousands of customers that can make a big difference in your business yeah so when we talk about virality what we're looking at is when you post on tiktok which video goes viral relative to your other videos you know not a lot of people are interested in white label media buying for agencies or how to optimize your uh meta with machine learning algorithm 
relative to the larger <laughs> 340 million people in the United States. But, you know, 3,000 people might be interested in that. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. viral compared to most of my videos that have 500 views on it or 200 yeah. views on it, right? So the point is, viral is relative is relative to your other channels and that's really creative testing right that's really understanding mm -hmm. which products and services and message your customers want from you at any given moment and you find that out with a creative testing framework with advertising or with social media content posting so then absolutely take your best pieces of content and run them as ads that is a key part of the strategy that works to generate more sales for clients. That's a key part of the strategy for giving consumers different types of messages. Because what you want to do, going back to this idea of creative testing and going back to meta, and by the way, this also works on Twitter and um, TikTok and connected television like Hulu and Roku and, and banners. What you want to do is give your channels a way for the algorithm to discern which creative is best. I'm not, I'm an expert, right? The, you know, in quotes, I'm an expert. I'm going to tell you which ad is the best. But the reality is anyone that does that, probably not the best, not that's, that's wrong. Like you and mm -hmm. I, and even the best creative people, we need variation. I need five, 10, a hundred ads with slight differences or major differences. And one of those ads mm -hmm. will be to the moon. Yeah. I don't care about predicting the future. I care mm -hmm. about giving the future, giving our business an opportunity to succeed in the future. And the mm -hmm. way we do that is take your best videos on from social media, create content that you think is good, create ugly ads. Ugly ads do really well. <laughs> Create a variety of messages so the algorithm can route its your messages to the right people. Because by the way, different types of people like different types of messages. Some people like when there's long text in ads. Some people mm. like when there's very little text in ads. Some people like images. Some people like long form video, 30, 60, two minutes in an ad. Some people like 15 seconds. So the way we train these algorithms to drive sales for our clients is we give them variety of ads. Some people respond to very positive language in ads. Some people respond to very negative language in ads mm -hmm. because it triggers them. We're all wired slightly differently. We're all wired to respond based on our experiences and our current situation and whatever random thing is going on that has nothing to do with anything, but it, it, it biases the way we perceive the world. So as marketers, we want to give these algorithms and these platforms and ultimately consumers choice. I'm also, mm -hmm. I'm selling you the same product, but I want you to figure out which way of consuming my message works for you because it, it generates more sales for the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wonderful. They said, uh, I think we, you know, we covered a lot, you know, uh, talking about uh, local businesses start thinking about scaling the growth through advertising and kind of how should companies think about marketing and advertising in a very complex media environment. Um, if there's anything you wanted to add um, before we, you know, conclude, how can people contact you, follow you, you know, check out your, your growth at Brill Media, you know, switching to Brill Media, et cetera. Absolutely. So a few things. Number one, go to brillmedia.co, B-R-I-L-L media.co. There's a contact us uh, button at the top. Reach out. You can schedule a meeting directly with me and we can have a strategy conversation to look for the best ways to grow your business. At the very low end, if you have, let's say, $1,500 a month to spend in marketing and advertising, we can help you. We charge $500. You pay $1,000 directly to the platform. And together, we can grow your business. The last thing I'll tell you is when you're looking at solutions is you want to look for people with seniority and performance. I've been in the business for 20 years. Our buyers and our, our account managers have been in the business for 7 to 17 years. This is not a casual thing for us. This is not our, our side hustle. 
This is the thing we've dedicated our professional lives to, just like you've dedicated to your practice. You want to work with people who are dedicated to advertising and marketing because you will get outsized returns as a result of our long-term experience. So brillmedia.co. Nice. And for all the listeners out there, let's thank for this wonderful podcast episode. Um, you know, great contact information from uh, an expert professional and all of Robert's resources will be in the links and show notes. And with that, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. Thanks, Chris.